Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Michael Majaber, founder and CEO of Epilog. It's a real pleasure to have you here today. This is our final webinar for our current offering that ends today. We appreciate all the support that we've gotten from thousands of investors during our journey. We've raised over $5 million to date, and that has been instrumental in helping us get to where we are today. So once again, I wanna thank all our investor friends supporting us through the years. Some disclaimers before we start. This is a regulation CF offering and this presentation may include predictions, estimates, or otherwise uh, information that might be considered forward-looking these statements represent our current judgment what the future holds. They're subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ. You can find the full terms and condition of our current offering on the website listed on top of this slide. Today's presentation has five sections. Uh, we'll start by providing a company overview. We'll discuss the company's solution and products next, the positioning, pricing, and scalability of Epilog products, why you should consider investing in Epilog today, and then followed by a Q&A session. So we'll start with the company overview. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with us and some of you may be new, so uh, bear with me. So I'm, this is our management, management team. I'm Michael Majaver, CEO and founder of Epilog. My technical background is in computer vision. I studied quantum physics and statistical economics at UCSD. Um, I skipped the formal PhD program because I didn't want to be stuck for seven, 10 years and did research in computer vision for physics experiments. Um, during that time, I was at Fermilab, Cornell University, and finally at CERN for about five years. Um, CERN is the European Center for Nuclear Research in Switzerland. Uh, I was part of a team of about a thousand scientists working on one of the main detectors that you see in this picture. So after that research phase, I started my first company, uh, which was about two or three years later acquired by Palco, which is now Schneider Electric. My second company went public uh, and it's currently called Gaming Innovation Group. It's headquartered in Norway and has a $4 billion valuation. At the time I was there, we probably had close to 100 employees. Um, I was CEO between 2008 and 2009. So Lance is our CTO and director, also co-founder at Applog. His uh, specialty is computer vision. Mark Mumford is the director of sales. He's a Silicon Valley veteran worked for Steve Jobs at Next. And uh, Ronnie Greenberg is a director, also Silicon Valley veteran, uh, former director of Intel Capital. So a little bit about the company. Uh, we have three offices in Silicon Valley, in San Jose, San Francisco, and Santa Cruz. Um, San Jose is a business office. Uh, the rest are basically labs we have the capability to test electronics, uh, validate RF circuits. Uh, we have a clean room for optical design, some manufacturing capability, and then for higher volume production, we contract out. Uh, we contract out engineering to the extent that we can, and some of our engineers work remote. 
so our annual budget is about a million dollars a year. Uh, for 2003, that was a mix of about half and half, uh, half going to engineering and manufacturing related activities. And the other half went into sales and marketing, legal accounting, facilities and equipment. So next I'm gonna cover the company uh, technology and uh, products. So the main motivation for Apolog is to match human vision. And, and why this is important, uh, so this is an example right here, just driving down the street. Um, basically, there's no solution on the market that can duplicate what we see. Um, there's many other applications for this too, um, but I'll mainly focus on the self-driving today and driving technology. So we produce about 10 to 100 times better image quality at the same cost as our competitors. We have nine patents covering this. So um, the typical image that you get from a, like a high definition sensor that you would find in a Tesla or some of the other vehicles costs about $50 and they produce a pretty pixelated image like you see here on the left. If you had the ability to capture that image in 4K, this is actually what your smart, smartphone does. Uh, it's about a $500 device and you do a little bit better. You can, like in this example, see uh, sort of like the silhouette of a car and, and, uh, and, a, uh, and a person on a bike. When you get to 8K, uh, this is for the most part, professional equipment that costs like $50,000. You'll be able to make out uh, so the vehicle, like you can read a sign. Uh, you'll be able to uh, find some more details that weren't available at the low resolution. What's really amazing is that uh, if a person in the same situation would be able to read the license plate and also look at the side mirror and see the person that's driving the car. So there's a sort of like a long way to go from 8K to match uh, what people can't see. And that's for, for the most part, our innovation. So the main challenge actually to bring in our technology, like I mentioned, we have nine patents on this, was the artificial intelligence part. Uh, so we didn't have the processing power to keep up with these larger images until really recently. Um, we sort of have about a thousand times more processing power than we did eight years ago. And it's in a smaller package and uh, at low power. So based on this, uh, you know, new technology that became available, we made like two different classes of product. One is specifically for automated driving and we sell that under the Applog brand. And then for the automated monitoring, which is I'll get to uh, next, we uh, have a subsidiary called the Paris so that there's no confusion in the channels. So altogether, we have four products right now that are either finished or uh, pretty close to being finished. Uh, so the main one is Sidecar. Uh, you probably heard a lot about that. That's being sold now as for self-driving. Uh, we have a, a new product, which is like the AI video compression part of pretty much uh, what we've been developing as a separate edge product that's going into the security market, it will be released next quarter. And then we have two other products that are um, still in development. One is a security product, the AK. AI based uh, surveillance product called Close View that's expected to be finished next year. And then we also have a digital health product called Welcome. I won't get into these products in detail. Uh, there's no time, and then we'll have separate webinars covering these in the future. So, you know, the question that I get uh, pretty often is like, how can you do that? How can you have so many products? Um, as such a small company. And sort of like the key is we've 
consolidated all of our technology into a, a single platform. It's a little bit larger than a credit card. You see the picture here. And it allows um, all these uh, products to come out of the single platform. So I'm going to cover Sidecar uh, first. Uh, this is actually like a third generation product. Uh, we, um, um, we've reduced the size of it and then we've made it universal. So basically you attach it to a window, uh, a windshield of a, a car, and then it ties into the um, electronics to what's called the canvas. It's already existing um, uh, right there behind the rear view mirror. <laughs> so with uh, the third generation of Sidecar, we were able to support 200 models. Uh, you, you see them listed here, the, the brands. Uh, so if you haven't seen this video already, this is Sidecar driving in LA traffic. It's sort of like, I would say like the, the most uh, useful application is uh, driving in traffic, but uh, people use it pretty much in all different situations. I, I personally did this drive. It took was about a thousand miles round trip and about 90% of it was handled by sidecar. So um, the next thing that I'm gonna cover is uh, scalability. So um, um, everybody's familiar with this idea of um, sales cycles. So uh, you, you, even if you're not into sales, it's basically this idea that a high price item is more difficult to sell. So you can think of a house or an expensive car. Um, there are not as many people that can afford it. And so the sales cycles are really slow. Uh, the lead times are long and um, the sale is complicated. So for example, maybe a financing requirement or some other thing that might completely uh, cancel the sale because it took a year to complete. With the low price items, and I'm giving the example of a bicycle here, <clears throat> it's basically easy to sell the product and scale. Uh, everybody can afford a low price product. Sales cycles are fast and it's easy to scale. Um, you can pay for it with a credit card, for example. So I made this chart, I actually looked for this chart and nobody's made one before. So uh, feel free to use this if it's uh, useful to you. Uh, so what it shows is uh, sort of like the sales multiples that you get by uh, reducing the, the price of, a, a, you know, and in this case it's a commodity I actually uh, covered uh, cars and uh, transportation basically. So on the left here, we have like a hundred forty thousand dollar car. This is a manufacturer. All this information is global data from publicly traded companies. So this particular manufacturer has an average selling price of one hundred forty thousand dollars, and and so um, I, that's basically like the reference. So if you reduce the price uh, from one hundred forty thousand to to sixty thousand uh, dollars different manufacturer uh, for their offering, then you see a seven times improvement in the, in the sales. And this is sort of intuitive, easy to understand. And then if you go to an inexpensive vehicle, um, um, for example, like a Honda, uh, you get to 30 times the sales at, at, at say like a $30,000 average price. These are global sales uh, for Honda, actually. And then if you go to Honda motorcycles, uh, then their global sales are 56 times more than the average price of a thousand. They, they, they sell about 18 million motorcycles in the world today. So I'm using this sort of as a reference. Uh, you can use it for, as a reference for really a lot of different products in this price range. If you get to a hundred dollar price point, and this is estimated, just uh, extrapolating the other data, you'll probably be able to sell a thousand times as many units. Short sales cycles and uh, lots of volume. So I did this comparison actually on the start engine uh, 
uh, uh, website where they have their success stories. Uh, this actually lists it. Uh, the link is down at the bottom of this slide if you want to see it. And I compared like a dozen companies that highly successful companies, including us, uh, that uh, raised, uh, you know, built devices and raised uh, significant amounts of money on uh, Start Engine. Uh, to my surprise, pretty much all these companies are like on the slow cycle, uh, sales cycle, uh, low scale scalability end of the spectrum. You know, hundred thousand dollar, thirty thousand dollar offerings. I'm not going to uh, name these companies. Um, probably the worst performing one is Nightscope. Um, so um, we're pretty much the only company, at least on that has been a success story on Start Engine, where it's in the sweet spot for like at about a thousand dollar price range. I say between five hundred dollars and twenty five hundred dollars. So if you can scale really fast and there's enough margin there to, to really make it worthwhile, you know, we're not selling coffee or pizza or, and it's a protective of patents. So why would you invest in Apple Arc? Well, I, I gave you, I think, one important reason. Now we have scalable technology that, uh, you know, we could eventually sell, for example, Sidecar on Amazon. Uh, uh, it's patented, and we're offering 10 to 100 times better price performance than the competition. Um, what's amazing is that we can maintain this uh, edge like over time. So if the competition was able to, you know, do two times better, we can do 10 times better than what they do. This is just the nature of our technology. And um, we've already delivered, so we, like, as I mentioned, we already have, we have a, a single platform that supports multiple products. So we're already doing four products. Uh, once these products get into production, we could do it, you know, 10 more. There's no, and covering different markets. Um, somebody asked if you could put them in drones. Uh, we can certainly do that then we have the bandwidth to cover more products. Um, <clears throat> again, emphasizing that we've already delivered product to market. Uh, some of the other 10 companies that uh, I mentioned, um, they're still in the prototype phase or like in a concept phase. Uh, we're already in you know, production, we're selling product. Uh, our second product is due in the second quarter. That's Vortex I mentioned, uh, there was an update on that. We're also building up about a million dollars in inventory. Uh, so uh, once uh, Sidecar is in production, uh, like uh, the new version, the third generation, we think that we can scale very quickly. So um, if you're a new investor, I hope I answered like uh, why you should invest. If you're an existing investor, you should certainly consider investing in us uh, more. Uh, it will help us propel uh, this company forward. And then uh, again, for existing investors, we have a 50% uh, bonuses. So what's ahead? Uh, we're basically uh, ramping up revenues. Uh, expect to do that in 2025. Uh, in particular with the sidecar product. Uh, we we're planning to, uh, we started actually this uh, whole self-driving technology working with OEM, uh, OEMs like Honda, Continental, and uh, a few other ones. And then um, because self-driving technology is moving really slow, uh, you've probably been tracking it on the OEM end, um, we decided to take this market to this market, to the market directly. But we're basically now ready to revisit some of those partnerships uh, now. Um, we're, um, we need additional funding to finish the production on the 1K units, uh, design changes. And then we need to 
basically build up inventory for the next batch of product. So for all these, uh, and then also to prepare for an exit. So um, <clears throat> all this will require additional investment. So uh, we need your help to get there and uh, we hope that you use this uh, final opportunity to invest. So um, that's the end of my uh, presentation. If you have any questions, if you want me to cover any of the previous slides, uh, let me know. Uh, and we're going to go into the Q&A session now. So um, first question that we have here is, uh, is sign card designed for the OEM uh, and not only aftermarket sales and to autom automotive manufacturers. In other words, um, will there be additional hardware and software needed to realize the full capability of Sidecar? So um, if you basically have uh, a multifaceted approach to uh, selling Sidecar, we started working with the OEMs and they move really slow, so we decided to take the product to market directly because we, we saw the opportunity. And uh, but those OEMs are still there's basically no other solution on the market that can offer the same capability that we're offering. That is, say like 8K resolution at uh, you know a few hundred dollars or. Five hundred dollars worth of uh, hardware. Uh, so this opportunity is wide open with all the OEMs, and so uh, we and and I guess the most interesting thing now is that we can support twenty different brands and uh, two hundred different models. So we go down the list uh, to all these OEMs and show them sidecar, and so uh, it's sort of like something that we'll be pursuing in the. Uh, year ahead. Uh, in the meantime, we're, we're just really building up the brand recognition for Sidecar and, and um, apologies here. So the second question that we have is, uh, when do you think Apple will go public? And so this, um, so, so basically we built the company to go public from the start as a Delaware company. And uh, we've been audited uh, to PCAB, PCAOB standards for about three years now. And um, the main really like, uh, obstacle now is revenue. So once we're on a revenue wrap, then it makes it go make sense to go public. And um, if you do that early, and I can give you probably 100 different examples where companies went public too early, and then uh, you basically devalue the stock quickly. So the answer to your question is, uh, as soon as we're on a revenue wrap, Question is, um, there was a statement in your recent email about our greatest quarter ever, except, and that made me nervous about the company's financial strength. And it's when you stated that fundraising has been hugely disappointing. So um, that's actually um, sort of like a side effect of um, the state of the crowdfunding industry right now. There are about 1,400 companies raising uh, 
under the uh, crowdfunding regulations. And so I think like I talked to some of our investors and they're getting, you know, hundreds of messages, messages a week. So um, we've had a really hard time with um, basically delivering the epilogue message to uh, potential investors. Um, the company has very low overhead, so we, uh, we can basically uh, maintain our uh, momentum uh, for a while, but to really ramp up our uh, company to get it to the next level, we'll need additional investment. So uh, following this uh, fundraising, we'll might to um, look at other options, but I think the company is plenty strong for the time ahead. Question from why, how would you compare it to Tesla's self-driving uh, technology? So actually uh, I did like a, a couple of webinars on this topic and um, I would say that Sidecar is almost directly comparable to the standard Tesla autopilot. Uh, in some ways it's better and in some ways it's worse, but comparable to um, the sort of like the free version of Tesla autopilot. Um, compared to the more advanced versions of uh, the autopilot, uh, they definitely do a better job uh, and they definitely uh, do a better job than most of the other uh, companies in the market. Uh, far away from self-driving, but uh, to use that, you would have to buy a Tesla. So, you know, if, if you want an electric car and you prefer Tesla, then that's an option for you. For 200 other, you know, models, um, 30 other brands, um, you don't really have the option for uh, the Tesla autopilot. Again, I, uh, I can uh, provide a link to the webinar if you're interested to, to see that. Question is, what is your plan to, for an exit? Um, what kind of revenue do you need to uh, to accomplish that? And would you consider VC funding? So, um, as I mentioned before, we we basically have three options for an exit. Is like uh, we can either we can either be acquired. Um, or we can go public or just uh, sort of like organically build the company. So uh, if once we get to a point where the company is growing uh, pretty fast, like the revenues are increasing, really like all the options are open. So that's what we're trying to get to next. The question is, if, if you invest in Epilogue, you also get shares in Paris. And so the, the answer is yes. So for the time being, if you basically um, uh, are keeping Epilogue and Paris in the same offering, it's a subsidiary. So if you buy shares in Epilogue, you also own shares in Paris. In the future, we might separate uh, the two offerings, uh, for example, there might be one under sidecar, self-driving technology, and there might be one under Paris. Uh, but for the time being, if you buy shares in Epilog, you also buy shares in Paris. Well, um, that's the end of our presentation now. Uh, and uh, I will email any additional questions uh, uh, for additional questions. Uh, so thank you for attending the webinar again. And um, don't forget to invest and support us today. See you next time.